So it sounds like having a conversation about the organization as a whole, um, challenging maybe some of the way things were done in terms of diversity and inclusiveness, um, and also having conversations in all directions around creating meaning and really what is your why, what is your purpose, creating a sense of belonging, which you said is one of the four needs of creating meaning inside of that. Are there any other conversations that you think that that need to be occurring that are that are not occurring in today's workplace as much as maybe they should? It's an excellent question. I think you summed up the the really important conversations that need to be having be have. And I think a lot of people are really struggling, especially to have the individual conversations. I think there's some band-aid approach like, okay, let's all talk about the organizational purpose. Okay, done, check. Um, and when you actually look at what's happening between supervisors and their direct reports in terms of conversations, they're lacking majorly. And I hear that from my coaching clients all the time. Coaching clients aren't typically leaving a job because of the organization, although certainly culture can play a role, but it's often supervisor conflicts or supervisor not noticing how much they are contributing, um, not just sitting down and having those review meetings that should be more open-ended. They're more just about, okay, you did this, you didn't do this, here's another goal. And my client is saying, you know what, I, I'm about more than this. Like, why are we not talking about what I can bring to this organization and what my goals are in the future and how I see my impact evolving. Why we're not, I'm not sure because leaders would really benefit from tapping into that energy. That's what it seems like is that you're missing out on the, the resources and attributes that the employees have by not having that conversation. Is one of the barriers like how to even start that? Do you have any suggestions on how to bridge that? You never talked about meaning and purpose before and all of a sudden it's on the agenda. Yes, I agree that one of the barriers is meaning and purpose. Those terms are way too big. I actually don't use them that often because um, people find them to be overwhelming. Even in my classes of psychology students, um, I say right off the bat, I'm like, okay, let's, let's take it down a notch. Number one, we're not talking about the meaning of life. I have no interest in figuring out the meaning of life. That Leave that to philosophers. That's beautiful to think about, but how we create meaning in our lives, which is really a question of how do you do what you do every day and why do you do it? So don't ever bring up the words. You don't have to talk about meaning and purpose because purpose too feels like there's this big thing out there that I have to somehow find and I get one purpose and it must be floating in the ether, which is not true either. Um, so I find those words alone problematic. And instead, the conversation could be framed around the elements that lead towards meaning and purpose. So things like getting clear on an, an individual's strengths, interests, personality, and values, that's a great starting place. So break that down. Reflect back to the individual where you see them being very strong. And then think about how, have conversations around how can we encourage you to do more work that is that type of thing that builds, leans into those strengths. That's a great starting point where you're actually going to start building meaning for the person without ever talking about, hey, let's find meaning for you. Um, so because then they're going to feel more impactful. Research is pretty clear that when we build on our strengths, we have greater impact. <music>